Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITG Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish and in today's video I am uh, going to present a very nice technique uh, in central force motion that's not normally taught in the standard JE theory so I'm sure you are going to uh, enjoy this video and please do make sure that you watch the video up till end so that this technique stays with you. So without much ado let me straight away get into the question of the day or the challenge of the day. Uh, this uh, problem is from INPHO 2013. Uh, there were many parts to the problem A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. So uh, I did not uh, keep all the parts here because some of them were uh, very trivial kind of uh, things. Uh, so what I have kept is the last two parts of the problem uh, which uh, do involve all the concepts that are derived in the previous parts. So without much ado, let's see the question. So here's the question. As you know that planets move in elliptical orbits under action of gravity of sun. Suppose we assume that orbit is circular of radius r0 and planet is slightly disturbed from its position such that its position r is given as r0 plus delta. Let's say at t equal to 0 you give it a slight flick. Suppose uh, here's a planet and you give it a little flick over here. So that's what we have done where delta is much much delta uh, by r0 is much much less than 1 show that planet will oscillate simple harmonically around the mean position r0 so we have to show that this r0 uh, distance uh, i mean this distance of the planet from the sun will uh, vary simple harmonically that's what we have to prove and we also have to find out the time period for these radial oscillations given the mass of sun is capital m and the gravitational constant is capital g okay so this is one part and then the second part of the problem is instead of gravitational field we have for this part we assume that planet moves under the force expressible as a power of rs f is equal to minus c r to the power n. So we are talk talking about a general kind of a field. For example if instead of c we have a capital G and instead of uh, n we have uh, minus 2 then this becomes like gravitational field and proportionality is 1 by r square. So but instead of a gravitational field we are talking about a general central field f is minus c r to the power n where c is greater than 0 is a constant. For what values of n a stable orbit is possible? Orbit need not uh, necessarily be circular or nearly circular. So we have now we are talking about uh, uh, stability for a general uh, orbit under a general central force uh, of uh, r to the power n form. Okay, so if you want you can give it a try. I will get into my analysis right away. Okay, let's see. So what are the concepts or ideas that we are going to learn in this videos which are involved for solving this problem? So first uh, thing that we are going to learn is how to convert a two dimensional uh, central force problem into one dimensional problems. This needs some explanation. You know that uh, general central force orbit is going to be some function of r and theta. So there are two variables involved. So there is r as a function of time and there is theta as a function of time. And uh, as such the problem looks complex but there is a very ne neat technique by which we can convert the entire problem into just a uh, r and t uh, uh, only. Uh, we need not we can eliminate theta using a neat trick okay and then the other concept that we are going to learn is when a particle is subjected to some kind of potential energy function and it oscillates then the time period of oscillation is simply given as t is equal to 2 pi under root of m divided by uh, second derivative of the potential energy okay so these two things we are going to prove and then we are going to apply this to the current problem okay so how do we convert a 2D central force problem into a 1D problem? See, uh, now consider a general orbit of a planet. Let's say we are not having a circular orbit, some general elliptical orbit or maybe some other uh, central force need not be gravitation. So in case of gravitation, uh, the potential energy is uh, minus gmm by r. And what about the kinetic energy? See, this particle has uh, two components of velocity. One is the radial component of velocity, other is the tangential component. Okay. So radial component of velocity is simply r dot and the tangential component of velocity is r times theta dot. Okay. This theta keeps on changing. So d theta and this distance is going to be r d theta. So uh, uh, r times so, uh, two components of velocity, one is r dot radial component, other one is r times theta dot, that is the tangential component. So what's the kinetic energy? So uh, because of tangential motion half m v tangential square that is r theta dot squared plus uh, kinetic energy due to the radial velocity that is half m r dot square. So this is your total energy of the orbit. Okay. Now we also know that in this central force motion angular momentum will always remain conserved. Why? Because the force will pass through the center of the central force. 
uh, field okay and what is the angular momentum so you see uh, the tangential velocity so mass times uh, radius times tangential velocity right v tangential so uh, and tangential velocity is r theta dot so mr into r theta dot becomes mr square theta dot so that's your angular momentum right which is constant okay and uh, this uh, okay and uh, this now uh, uh, we can use the angular momentum to uh, substitute this term this term is half m r theta dot square so l is m r square theta dot so you can always find out theta dot in terms of l theta dot will be l upon m r square and if you put that theta dot here so this term simplifies to l square upon 2 m r square so you see how cleverly we have eliminated theta dot now <coughs> and uh, our energy uh, function looks like minus gmm by r comes as it is and this terms has been substituted by l square upon 2mr square using equation 2 you can pause the video if you want and you can see uh, the mathematics works out perfectly so there's no more theta dot here we have uh, substituted theta dot in terms of angular momentum which is another constant okay and plus half mr dot square comes as it is now if you look at this uh, energy function this looks like uh, the equation of motion for a one dimensional potential so minus gm by r is also a function of r only and l square by 2mr square is also a function of r only so think of this as a potential energy of a particle moving along r axis a straight line motion along r axis so this is the potential energy of the function of r and this is the kinetic energy of the function of r and now it becomes like a problem of solving one dimensional motion under modified potential energy function which is given by the sum of this and l square by 2mr square right and uh, if we can solve this uh, this uh, equation uh, solve for this motion one dimensional motion then we have solved uh, for the original r as a function of time right because the differential equation looks similar or energy equation looks similar okay so that's what i've written now this problem reduces to a one dimension problem in r like a single particle moving along r axis under potential energy function vr instead of this we have this modified effective potential energy function right so uh, how will the motion be so the potential energy function suppose it has a minima somewhere so you know that the particle can oscillate in the uh, value of this potential energy function right so if this is the potential energy function then what will the force function look like so you know that force is minus dv by dr so near the value if you plot you will get a force function like this and uh, of course at the valley the force must be zero because uh, force is nothing but derivative of the potential energy so here the force is zero and if you are uh, this is the equilibrium point equilibrium uh, let's say we are calling it as r naught and if you are a little further away from this r naught what is the force function so you know, you know that taylor approximation f of r naught plus x is f of r naught r naught plus df by dr into x where x is the small displacement from the uh, equilibrium or mean position right and of course force at r0 is 0 why because this slope is 0 so here the force is 0 so f of r0 is 0 and df by dr times x that's the only the force so at x distance the force is df by dr into x but f itself is dv by dr minus dv by dr so df by dr becomes second derivative of uh, potential energy right minus so uh, so this is your force f r0 goes to 0 so force at r0 plus x is df by dr into x and then force is equal to mass times acceleration so at little further distance x so you can say that this df by dr into x should be equal to m times d square x by dt square okay and then df by dr can be written as minus d square v by dr square so that's what i have done df by dr is minus d square v by dr square into x and this is equal to m d square x by dt square and now this looks like standard simple harmonic motion differential equation and its uh, time period is simply given as t is equal to 2 pi under root of m upon v double dash okay because this is nothing but v double dash so minus v double dash of uh, r naught this was at r naught times x is equal to m times d square x by dt square so this is our time period now uh, i am going to use this these ideas to solve the current problem right now let us consider the circular orbit okay so for the circular orbit uh, we can say that gmm by r0 square should be equal to m omega square r0 okay so the centripetal force equation and angular momentum will be simply m r0 square omega so from equation 7 and 8 we can eliminate omega and we can express l in terms of other variables so if you do that l comes out to be small m into under root of g capital m r0 okay now 
once i have l i can use uh, this l to form the effective potential function that i derived in equation number 3 so let me show you equation number 3 once again for a recap so here is the equation number 3 so effective potential energy function was minus gmm by r plus l square upon 2m r square so now we have derived uh, l here l is this so l square by 2m r square becomes uh, this term l square by 2m r square you just put and l square by 2m r square if you calculate that comes out to be this and minus gmm by r is as it is so this becomes your effective potential energy function for the one dimensional problem and plus half m r dot square comes as it is okay so now you take the second derivative of this one right and calculate the second derivative at r naught so uh, then time period can be readily found so if you differentiate this twice i have done using mathematica you can also do it manually not a very difficult differentiation so this is the derivative of uh, um, effective potential function effective potential energy function and uh, uh, you evaluate it at r naught this term you put instead of r you put r naught so this becomes gmm by r naught cube so time period simply becomes 2 pi under root m by v double dash of r naught which is 2 pi under root of r naught cube upon gm so that's our answer to the first part of the problem okay so, so <laughs> i hope you understood the first part uh, if required you can try playing this video at 0.75x uh, speed uh, so that you understand everything uh, completely i have tried to explain everything probably uh, a little fast but i hope you were able to understand otherwise you can again play the whole thing or you can pause at places and think over it so this is for our first part okay then there was second part of the problem which uh, asked for stability of orbit so let me just show you the second part of the problem again for this part we assume that force function is minus c r to the power n where c is greater than 0 for what values of n a stable orbit is possible okay so not all force function will lead to a stable orbit orbit of course you can get but then uh, you know that for stability uh, for for equilibrium all you need is either a valley or a peak or anywhere where the derivative is 0 but if there is a peak of potential function then obviously this is not a stable equilibrium for stable equilibrium you need a valley so that means what effective potential should have the second derivative of the effective potential should be positive and the first derivative of effective potential should be zero for equilibrium stable equilibrium right so that's what we are going to do we want to find the value of n for which stable equilibrium is stable orbit is obtained so let's see how to do that one okay so for second part uh, here we are so force function is minus c r to the power n which is minus du by dr okay effective potential function was u of r plus l square by 2m r square as i derived earlier so for equilibrium v dash of r should be zero so i've just di differentiate this equation number 14 what do i get so du by dr plus derivative of this becomes l square by 2m is a constant comes outside and minus 2 r to the power minus 3 equal to zero and du by dr is nothing but c r to the power n right du by dr is c r to the power n so so this becomes c r to the power n and minus this simplifies to l square upon m r cube equal to 0 okay so this is what we get as dv by dr okay which should be 0 so this is equation number 16 okay now second derivative of v should be positive for stability of the orbit so i differentiate this equation once more what do i get so from this one i get uh, n c r to the power n minus 1 and from this one if you differentiate you get l square by m you take common outside and inside you get minus 3 r to the power minus 4 okay and this should be greater than 0 for stability right uh, valley means the second derivative is positive okay now what you can do l square by m you can substitute from equation 16 here and then simplify so substituting for l square by m from equation 16 l square by m will come out to be c r to the power n plus 1 see uh, it should be uh, yeah c r to the power this should be n plus 3 sorry i made a mistake l square by m is uh, c r to the power n plus 3 just a sec let me correct this so this is n plus 3 okay okay and uh, this you can put here then uh, l square by m if you put there here you are going to get r to the power n minus 1 why because this is r to the power minus 4 and here n plus 3 so n plus 3 divided uh, and 3 minus 4 is n minus 1 so this is what you get okay this term is nc r to the power n minus 1 and there 
plus 3 uh, uh, c so minus and minus become plus so plus 3 c r to the power n minus 1 n plus 3 and minus 4 okay this is greater than 0 now you can take c r to the power n minus 1 outside and inside you are left with n plus 3 this is greater than 0 of course radius is positive c is a positive constant so n plus 3 must be greater than 0 that means n should be greater than minus 3 okay so that solves our condition for part 2 of the problem i hope you enjoyed this analysis and if you enjoyed my analysis please do give it a thumbs up and please share this video as much as possible with your friends through whatsapp telegram discord or whatever medium you use for networking with your fellow students preparing for olympiads or uh, itj and uh, most importantly if you're not already subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel right now because that's what keeps me motivated to do a new video almost every day for all of you and thanks a lot for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one and as always god bless you all Thank you.